Uh, good afternoon, brothers and friends. Uh, today, we're going to speak on a very important subject to concern us every single one of us, and is this coronavirus, the COVID-19. And the title of my presentation is, And he stood and rebuked the fever, and it left her. So when Jesus rebuked the fever, the fever has to go. What are we going to do? How can we pray for those who are sick? Is that such a way that we can do it with power? In the scriptures, uh, in Luke 4, verses 38 to 41, it reads, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife, mother, was taken with a great fever. So the mother of Simon was taken with a great fever. Are we living with a great fever? This is a great fever. And David sought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her. Do we have the same power today? Where we have access to Jesus, who has the power. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, suffered them not to speak, but they knew that he was Christ. In John 5, verses 5 and 6 says, And a certain man was there with, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, lie I knew that he had been now a long time, and that in that case, he said, uh, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? Jesus today is asking this question to you. Will thou be made whole? Are you afflicted by this coronavirus? Do you have a relative, a friend, an acquaintance that are, is afflicted? Or you are afflicted yourself? Or you need protection? God is asking you, will thou be made whole? When Jesus healed, he, only, he didn't even heal the body. He addresses the mind and, he, and that relationship with the person with God, the spirit. That's the wholeness of man. Mind, body, and spirit. Now, what is Jesus' uh, mission in this world? And his fame. Uh, this is registered in Matthew 4, 24. And his fame went through all Syria. And they brought into him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils. And those which were lunatic. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Not only diseases, but problems on the mind and problems of the spirit. Now, facing this great fever, and I read again from Luke 4, 38, verse, verse 38, And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, and Simon's wife, was mother, was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her, and he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Let me tell you another story of Jesus. There are many stories in which the power of God were upon him, but uh, let me enter into understanding the power that heals. What is that power that heals? 
And Matthew 20, 18 says, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus has nothing less than all power to heal. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So all the power that Jesus had was received from the Father in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it continues. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed or the devils, for God was with him. In Luke 5, verses 13, it says, And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy depart, departed from him. Verse 17, And he came to pass unto a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, His presence that heals. Now, Luke 5, 17 is, uh, that I address, and the power of the Lord was present and healed them. What is that power? That power is identified in Luke one thirty five when it says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. So the Holy Ghost is identified as the power of the highest. Acts 6, 5 and 8. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. So Stephen was full of the faith and of the Holy Ghost. Now verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, identifying the Holy Ghost as power again, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, we as Christians, every one of you that are a Christian, had this commandment from God himself. In Luke 10, verse 1, it says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whither he himself will come. Verse 5 of Luke 10. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. We are asking for the peace of God on that house. And if the son of peace be there, that's verse 6, the son of peace means the presence of Jesus Christ. Your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Verse 9, And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come night unto you. <coughs> So we see that healing the sick is accompanied with the preaching of the gospel. The kingdom of God has to go with the healing. We have to acknowledge the healer, the one that is called the kingdom of God. Let's put first things first. What is first? Matthew 9, 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying in bed, and Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sin be forgiven thee. First of all, when God wants to heal you, He wants to heal that relationship that has been broken between the Father and you. He forgives your sins. He forgives my sins. That beautiful healing happens first on the heart. Another point that we can see here is that God, as Jesus saw them, saw their faith, saw their faith, he turned and turned to the sick one. 
and, and told him that there's his sins had been forgiven. So, your friends, your family, anyone that is praying for you, God take into account their faith in your behalf. It's so important that the whole church united in prayer and fasting. Amen. The more prayer, the chances are that somebody is of faith and God will grant the petition of that person on your behalf. Jesus is the same physician today as when he was on this earth. Amen. Do you believe that? John 14, 13 and 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do. We're going to ask Jesus today. We're going to ask the Father in Jesus' name today. And we're going to claim this promise. Jesus healed the demon possessed. Mark 9.25 When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the, the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. The spirits cannot be in the presence of Jesus. Jesus heals diverse diseases. Luke 440. Now when the sun has set in, all that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. Jesus heals sickness of the mind. Matthew 424. And his fame went through all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken by diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. The word lunatic means crazy, schizophrenic, bipolar, out of their mind. Jesus heals the disease of sin. Don't try to look in the medical books the disease of sin. It's not there. But it's, it's real. Jeremiah 3.22 Return ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Jesus heals the broken hearted. How many of you are, are watching, and you yourself are broken hearted you are disappointed you are hurt you are betrayed you are left you are abandoned Jesus came today to heal you what difference is to be broken hearted and suffering coronavirus we need the same healing it's the same healer Jesus Christ with the power, with the power of the Holy Spirit Christ is the same compassionate physician now that he was during his early ministry. A prophet of uh, 1800s by the name Ellen G. White wrote the following. This is found in her book, Ministry of Healing, page 226. It's also found, Consoles to the Church, page 303, 303. This is what she says. Christ is the same compassionate physician now that he was during this earthly ministry. In him, there is healing balm for every disease, restoring power for every infirmity. His disciples in this time, who are the disciples of this time? Are you? Am I? are to pray for the sick as verily as the disciples of all prayed. How did Peter and John and James pray for the sick? They were human like you and I. No difference. But they get to the point in which we're all together in the upper room 
and they become one in the Spirit, confessing their sins. And their God sent the Holy Spirit in tongues of fire. And they were able to speak in tongues. They were able to heal the people with the power given to them. There is no difference. We have the same access to that power. And continues. And recoveries will follow. For the prayer of faith shall save the sick. We have the Holy Spirit's power. The calm assurance of faith that can claim God's promises. The Lord promised. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's a hundred percent a promise. That's found in Mark 16, 18. It is just as trustworthy now as in the days of the apostles. It presents the privilege of God's children, and our faith should lay hold of all that it embraces. Christ's servants are the channels of his working, and through them he desires to exercise his healing power as through you and I. It is our work to present the sick and suffering to God in the arms of our faith. We should teach them to believe in the great healer. The Savior will have us encourage the sick, the hopeless, the afflicted to take hold upon his strength. Now, is there any conditions for, our, for God to answer our prayers? Well, the scriptures mention the different conditions first of all we need to love our Lord God Deuteronomy 6 5 and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might how can we ask God for a favor when we don't love him we gotta love him we, how do we express love to God in an attitude of thankfulness. Ephesians 2.20 Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. How to pray. Jesus started how to pray in Matthew 6.9 by addressing the Father first. And after this manner, the, therefore pray ye our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as is in heaven. After we address our prayers to God the Father, we said and express, we are going to honor your name. The hallowed be thy name. Now we also need to give honor to Jesus Christ. Philippians 2.10 That at the name of Jesus, even every knee should bow, all things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. <coughs> Anything that we ask the Father has to go in the name of Jesus. John 14, verses 12 to 15. Verily, verily, I said unto you, he that believeth on me, the words of Jesus, the works that I do shall he do also. Can we understand the deepness of this? If we believe in him he says the works that I do shall he do also so he did miracles he say, he cleansed the leper he raised people from the dead he healed and then he says the works that I do shall he do also can we believe that we can do that here today what isn't happening because we don't have the faith that it takes. We don't have the power of the Holy Spirit that do the miracles. This coronavirus today, this pandemic, is a call for you to come to Jesus. Amen. Come back to me. Let us reason together. And he continues, And greater works than this shall he do, because I go into my Father, who is the source of all power? Who is the source of the Holy Spirit? And whosoever ye shall ask, and whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Ah, 
Not only we express that we love God by being thankful to Him, but we, hit, we need to love Him by expressing that we keep His commandments. John 16, 23 to 24. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I said unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. The Lord hears the prayers of the righteous. In Psalm 66, 18, it says, I If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I have sins in my heart and confess and forsaken, the Lord will not hear me. Proverbs 15, 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. My dear friend, you want a prayer? Look for a righteous one. Check if your pastor is righteous. Check your elders. A deacon. Or maybe a humble, simple member of the church that is righteous. His prayer had power. Not any prayer. We need to believe. Mark 9, 23 to 26. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with, te with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. How is your faith? Do you need to cry like Peter cried when he was drowning? Lord, help me. Lord, help my unbelief. I don't have power. My friends are dying. My family is dying. I'm dying. Lord, I don't have power. Please help my unbelief. We need to love God and obey Him. Deuteronomy 5.10 And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The mercy of God shows to them that love Him and we show the love by keeping His commandments. We need to repent and confess sins. Matthew 6.12 And forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. God only forgives your sins and my sins as I forgive those who have trespassed me or offended me. Lord, I cannot control the feelings. I have something against somebody. I cannot get it out. You take that feeling, Lord. You handle it for me. You said, come unto me, you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Lord, I don't have rest. Give me that rest. Verse 16 of Mark 6. Confess your faults one another and pray one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Do we have to confess something to another person? Somebody that we have offended? Somebody that we had crossed? Or we have to give money that we had taken from somebody? We have to do it right. You want the Lord to hear your prayers? We got to get right in every single aspect of our life. Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We need to pray in faith. Not our faith. Jesus' faith. We need to pray for it. Because faith comes by the hearing and the hearing of the word of God. And it says here in uh, James 5, 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Remember, forgiveness of sins comes with healing. They cannot be separated. Confess your faults one another, and pray one to another, that ye might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. If you need prayer, make sure to get a righteous man. Now, what about the church? 
What is the message for the church? Is there any condition of the church for the Lord to hear their prayers? It says in the book, Council of Diet and Food by Ellen G. White, the following. The church, in order to be purified and to remain pure, Seventh-day Adventists must have the Holy Spirit in their heart and in their homes. So, as you are in church, you should be the same at home. The Lord has given me light that when the Israel of today humble themselves before Him, number one, and clean the soul temple from all defilements, number two, He will hear their prayers on behalf of the sick. What is it that there are so many people that are sick in church and they don't get healed? Why they don't get healed by the prayers of the church today? For two reasons. Because they are not humble and they don't clean they don't have their soul temple cleansed. And the Lord continues, and I will bless in the use of his remedies of diseases. When in faith the human agent does all he can to combat disease, using the simple methods of treatment that God has provided, his efforts will be blessed of God. God bless the simple methods. Because the honor is only for God himself. Now, if you, if you receive medicine in the hospital, we're going to pray also for those medicines and for those doctors. Because it's, it's a part of God that heals. It's not the medicine, it's not the doctor. We need to get rid of vanity. Job 35, 13. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. We need to keep His commandments. We learn that, that we not only have faith, but we need to obey, and it's a way to show love to God. What parameters has given God as His commandments? And First John 3.22 says, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. God hears because we keep His commandments. Now, what are His commandments? Let me read it again. You can find them in Exodus in Exodus 20 and I'm going to start with verse 3 first commandment thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness for anything that is in heaven about of that is in the earth we need or that is in the waters under the earth number 2 thou shalt not bow thyself to them not serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and to the children's and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. What is the most obvious, the most obvious idol the, that is present in the, in the Christian churches today. We worship self. Self is the idol number one. Commandment number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless that taking his name in vain. We take his name in vain when we don't represent him. When people cannot see Jesus in you or in me. We are shaming to his faith by claiming to be Christians. To be Seventh-day Adventists. Commandment number four. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord. Thy number four. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But thy servant, seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughters, thy main servants, nor the, your man servants, thy main servants, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. The Sabbath is not Jewish, because the Sabbath was established before any Jew could be existing in this earth. It was given to mankind. It was given to Adam and Eve. And, and it, was, it was a date. God says, you and I will have a date every week. You will come and spend time with me, and you will receive instructions from me. And we'll have a great time together. Amen. Commandment number five. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is a promise. And there is healing in that promise. Honoring the father and the mother, and the Lord will, and the Lord will prolong our days upon the land. Meaning he will heal you. You won't die only in God's date. When the Lord appointed a day for us to die is when we should die. Not by accidents. Not by plagues. Only in God's day. Number six. Thou shalt not kill. We cannot only kill physically, but we can kill somebody's reputation by gossiping, by backstabbing. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's very, very important. Many people take this lightly, especially today in our society, when premarital sex is all rampant. When all kind of sexual deviations are happening and, it, and they are being instituted by law. Thou shall not steal. That's number seven. Have you paid God what belongs to Him? Have you returned to Him His fair share in our partnership? When we have the best partner on the world, he protects our business, he protects our life, give us health, give us food on the table, roof up upon our heads, protect our children when we are traveling in the road, and we don't return his part. He's calling us to give it 10% of our increase. And it wasn't for his blessing, you wouldn't have what you got. Remember that. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Do you know that by keeping silence and we let somebody else go and condemn or we keep silence for somebody's lost in business, that is also a false witness. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's... Uh, that's number 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor this man's servant, nor this maid's servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now we also have to do right in the eyes of the Lord. In Exodus 15, 26 it says, And I said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to my voice, or the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. And then the Lord swears by his name, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. We need to ask in the Spirit. Ephesians 6.18 Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.14 These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. We need to be in one accord. 
Acts 1.14. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplications with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. We need to pray according to his will. 1 John 5.14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to to his will, he will hear us. You probably remember King Hezekiah. The Lord sent the prophet to talk to him with a message. Put your life business in order. Your affairs in line. Because he will call thy soul. And he cried and he cried and begged the Lord Lord not me, not me, please then the Lord sent a message again with the prophet the Lord has given you 15 more years what happened to that king? he lost his eternal life he became a wicked king the Lord knows when your time to die is appropriate when he can save you and when he can save me the Lord knows that I don't want to die lost in sin I want to be in Jesus Christ and if I'm going to lose my life in the future because of my foolishness and the Lord knows he will put me to death put me to rest now in order to save me praise God death can be a blessing We know that God hears us if we ask according to his will, but to press out our petitions without a submissive spirit is not right. Our prayers must take the form not of command, but of intercession. That's found in the, in the book, The Faith I Live By, page 315. Now, we need also to include a period of fasting. Fasting is very important. We have a story here in, in Mar Matthew 17. And verse 14 says, And when they were, in camp, they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he fallen into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Verse 19, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I said unto you, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence you yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it, this kind goeth not out, by, but by prayer and fasting. Fasting cleans the body. It cleans the mind. It's so clear that you can talk to God and you can hear Him. And, and physically, it restores back the, the, the physical clock into our body. There is only one way to be healed. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation with the word salvation also it comes from the Greek uh, according to the uh, strong concordance number 4991 it means health and it says neither is there salvation or health in any other but there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and the same word also is translated into made whole or healed. My dear brother, perhaps you have a friend which is, is a Muslim, is a Hindu, is a, a animist, maybe a Zoroastrian, and they are sick. Well, you can tell them there is one way to be healed. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is nothing to lose. Even if we are not a Christian. Just in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord give me a chance in the name of Jesus Christ. 
if you are real and you are there, God will manifest himself to you and to them. Now we need to to know how to pray. There is a manner of prayer and it says here we know not what we should pray as we ought. In prayer for the sick it is, should be remembered that we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Romans 8.26 We do not know whether the blessing we desire will be the best or not. Therefore our prayer should include this thought. And this thought is found in Councils for the Councils for the Church page 305 and listen to this this is our prayer Lord thou knowest every secret of the soul thou art acquainted with these persons Jesus their advocate gave his life for them his love for them is greater than, our, than ours can possibly be therefore it is for thy glory and the good of the afflicted ones we ask in the name of Jesus that they may be restored to health. If it be not thy will that they may be restored, we ask that thy grace may comfort, thy presence sustain them in their sufferings. There are several reasons why God doesn't hear our prayers. We may have a selfish heart. We regard iniquity in our heart. We despise the law of God. We are vain. We have chosen a wrong course of actions. There is a, a statement here. Fasting and prayer will accomplish nothing while the heart is estranged from God by a wrong course of action. That's found in the book HL, page 236. Perhaps we, are, we have not confessed our sins. Because perhaps we are not using the means that God has provided. God does not work miracles where he has provided means by which the work may be accomplished. That's Review on Herald. Uh, Review on Herald 1888, number 29. Maybe we have a proud attitude and we command God and we tell God and we order God to do a miracle that is wrong we know that God hears us if we ask according to his will but not to press our petitions without a submissive spirit is not right our prayers must take the form not of command but of intercession the faith that I live by page 315 There are reasons why God has that he won't heal the righteous. And here is the reason. God knows, this is uh, from Ministry of Healing, page 229, 229. God knows the end from the beginning. He is acquainted with the heart of all men. He reads every secret of the soul. He knows whether those for whom prayer is offered will will or will not be able to endure the trials that will come upon them should they live. He knows whether they live their lives will be a blessing or a curse to themselves and to the world. This is one reason why, while presenting our petitions with earnestness, we should say, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. There are cases where God works decided by his divine power in the restoration of health, but not all the sick are healed. Many are laid away to sleep in Jesus. That's the faith that I lead by, page 315. Even some die in the time of Christ, in his days. Some die in the days of Christ and in the days of the apostles because the Lord knew just what was best for them. That's a letter 35, 
1890. Also, and it's found in Medical Ministry, page 17. Now, in conclusion. How can we do to make sure God answers our prayer in behalf of the sick? We need to love God. We need to express painfulness. We need to address the Father in heaven. We need, we need to give Jesus honor. We need to ask in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to hear. We need to be righteous so the Lord can hear our prayers. We need to believe. We need to obey God. We need to repent and confess our sins. We need to ask forgiveness and we forgive those that offend us. We need to pray in faith. We need to humble ourselves before him and cleanse the soul temple. We need to get rid of vanity. We need to keep his commandments. And because they are so important, I'm going to repeat it in a very short way. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any, any, any graven images or any likeness. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's properties. Also, do what is right in the sight of the Lord. We need to ask in the Spirit. Be in one accord. Ask according to His will. And include a period of fasting. God gave us a promise. And it's found in Exodus 15.26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in thy sight, in his sight, will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now God is giving us a blessing today. Psalms 91. And I'm going to read the whole, the whole psalm. And if you will keep an attitude of reverence. Listen to these words. Making this prayer your prayer with my prayer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the, nor the arrow that fly by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall now trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Amen. Amen. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now Jesus asked this question to you and I. Will thou may be whole? And this is my prayer. If you can pray with me. Second Corinthians 7.14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves 
and pray, and seek thy faith, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Psalm 6, 2. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Psalms 41, 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Psalm 60, verse 2. Thou hast made the earth to tremble, thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Jeremiah 7, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Hosea 6, 1. Come and let us turn into the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Now God has a command for all the Christians. This is for you and me. In Matthew 10, he says, Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. Luke 9, 2. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. If you preach, if you teach the kingdom of God, you must heal under the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the command of Jesus Christ. Luke 10, 9. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Praying for the heal for, for the sick also goes together preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us pray. Our Father that is in heaven, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we ask, because we are weak and we are nobody, only on his merits, Lord. Please heal my heart, please heal my soul. Lord, we have sinned, we have walked away from you. Take us back. We pray like Peter prayed when he was drowning, Lord, save me. Lord, take me by your hand and teach me bring up the faith that I need and Lord for those who are already walking in, in the faith strengthen their faith and bringing them up higher and a different level a different ex Christian experience that they have not had before Father in your hands I commend all that are viewers of this program in a um, their friends, their relatives, their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.